Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to discuss the best emulators currently available, considering the beginning of 2024. It's important to note that this video will present my opinion, combined with information from other emulators I've researched online. If you have a different opinion, please be polite and share your suggestion in the comments. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. The decision not to include RetroArch in this list is based on the fact that RetroArch is not strictly an emulator itself. Instead, it is a unified graphical interface that brings together various emulator cores under one umbrella. These cores are essentially system-specific emulators. RetroArch reuses code from existing open-source projects without always properly crediting or contributing to the development of these projects. In some cases, RetroArch may not substantially add to the advancement of these emulators. It's essential to highlight that the ongoing evolution of these projects benefits the emulation community as a whole since improvements in one emulator can result in enhanced performance across various devices. In summary, the decision not to include RetroArch in this list is based on the consideration that individual emulators provide a more specific and standalone experience for users, while RetroArch is a tool that brings together various such experiences. For nostalgic enthusiasts who love the classics of the 80s and 90s, the platform responsible for reviving the gaming industry after the collapse caused by Atari and its questionable games is the NES. The NES houses great classics capable of entertaining people of all ages to this day. For this task, the one responsible for bringing back the fun is Mezen, an emulator that provides incredible accuracy and can visually enhance games with HD packs. The NES library features 1391 licensed games, but at this stage, there are various community-made games and modifications forming a rich library, although many of the games are known for their high difficulty. For those who wish to enjoy a wide variety of old games, I recommend using Ares. You need at least a mid-range PC to run it, as it is a precision-based emulator. Ares supports thousands of games, spanning from Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Master System, Game Gear, Sega Genesis to lesser-known systems like PC Engine. With Ares, you can configure your classic games to run even on UHD screens, providing excellent quality. Additionally, the emulator offers various filters to deliver a unique experience and relive the classics. For arcade and Neo Geo games, there isn't an updated emulator to provide the ideal experience nowadays, so I recommend the reliable main. While it may seem, and indeed is, somewhat complex to set up, once configured, MAME offers an excellent experience with good accuracy and an extensive library of arcade games. Moreover, you don't need to pay for each token to play your favorite arcades. However, due to its complexity, I suggest downloading complete sets with ROMs and the emulator already configured to simplify the process. If you're a beginner in emulation, it might not be the best choice. In that case, opt for RetroArch, which, despite being less accurate, has a more user-friendly setup. When it comes to my second favorite system, the Sega Saturn, there are few options on the market due to its complexity, especially the intricate Saturn GPU. I have extensively covered the best emulators for the system in a comprehensive video, which you can check in the card. Currently, I recommend Yaba Sanshiro in its version 3, which can be considered the duck station for Saturn. It offers various improvements for emulator use on high-definition screens, such as shadow corrections, polygon resolution increase, and even an FXA filter. Yaba Sanshiro is the best option to enjoy the library of 1027 games for this system. Unfortunately, about 75% of these games were released only in Japan, but there are already modifications for other languages. It's worth noting that the Saturn is known for its practically 100% faithful arcade game ports, such as the King of Fighters and several other Capcom arcades based on the Marvel Universe. Moving on to the first PlayStation, the console responsible for shaping 3D games into what they are today, we have one of the best emulators of all time, DuckStation. This emulator fixes all the problems the first Sony console had, such as poorly fitting polygons. Additionally, it comes with numerous enhancements and advanced upscaling to provide the best possible experience when playing on the PlayStation. DuckStation is already such a mature emulator that it has entered maintenance mode, no longer receiving major updates as there are practically no more issues to be addressed. It still supports a texture pack system, providing a look more similar to modern games. Whether to relive the past or play an old title with significant improvements, DuckStation will be your companion as you explore the extensive library of almost 8,000 games available for the PlayStation. 
And we come to the first console of the sixth generation and Sega's last console on the market, the Dreamcast. There are excellent emulators for the Dreamcast, and there is also a dedicated video for this platform in the card. The emulator I chose was Flycast instead of Redream because Flycast offers a complete experience, while Redream requires payment to provide a complete experience. Overall, both have good accuracy and many enhancements to make your experience with Sega's last console as enjoyable as possible. Despite a slightly smaller library with only 620 titles, this system will offer experiences with perfect arcade ports and other excellent adventure games like Sonic Adventure. As I've mentioned in several other videos, the PlayStation 2 is my favorite console, so much so that I still have two consoles today. For this magnificent system, the only decent emulator we have is PCSX2. PCSX2 was once considered practically an abandoned project when it was in version 1.4, but in the last year, it underwent a major revitalization, gaining a new interface and many other settings. I consider this emulator the one that has evolved the most in the past year, about to release version 2.0. Among the improvements the system received, I highlight the automatic configuration of games. This means you will save a lot of time by no longer needing to search forums or YouTube for the best configuration to run your game. Just run the game, and the emulator will consult a database to download the best configuration for you. Additionally, there are patches for widescreen, anti-blur, texture packs, and an option for all games to run in progressive instead of interlaced. For those who want to explore the 3,421 games available in the library, enjoy PCSX2, as it is already compatible with 98% of these titles. The first Xbox entered the market in a generation dominated by the PlayStation 2. Despite facing strong competition, the console had great games. Unfortunately, there are currently no good emulators for the system. However, there are two emulators, CXBX Reloaded and Zemu, both of which are abandoned projects. The first Xbox was the reason I started this channel between 2021 and 2022. Starting with CXBX Reloaded, which is still in development but hasn't seen significant improvements since 2021. It runs only 16% of the games available on the platform with good performance but poor graphical accuracy, featuring various missing graphical elements. On the other hand, there's Zemu. If you've been following me for a while, you've probably heard me talk about the Toxic Zemu community and its completely inflated compatibility list. In short, I used to be one of the compatibility testers for Zemu and was making a video testing about 150 games. However, when I started reporting that some games listed as playable couldn't even get past the initial menu, I got banned and my tester status was revoked. Most of Zemu's compatibility list is misleading, considering any game that starts as playable regardless of whether it renders correctly or not. Out of the slightly over 1,000 games available in the Xbox library, Zemu claims to run about 80%, but I believe you can actually play only about 20 to 25%. Most games can't maintain 30 or 60 FPS, and the initial setup of this emulator is quite complex. The last major update the project received in 2023 was a save state feature. Another project that has been in maintenance mode for years, like PCSX2, is Dolphin. This emulator can run games from the GameCube and Nintendo Wii with great accuracy, offering features like texture packs, various enhancements, widescreen patches, and an Android version. Dolphin has long been considered a complete emulator, with over 38% of the library of these two consoles running perfectly, meaning games have no issues. This is a quite impressive achievement. Additionally, Dolphin works well with Wii motion controls emulated on the DualShock 4 or by converting motion controls into specific buttons. Dolphin is undoubtedly one of the best emulators ever created. But before we dive into handhelds, if you're enjoying the information in this video, please support the creation of this type of content by clicking the like button. And if this is your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. Now, let's talk a bit about handhelds, starting with the PSP, which also has a robust emulator, PPSSPP, available even for Android. Recognized as one of the best emulators ever developed, it practically supports all 2,230 games in the PSP library. Besides being a cross-platform emulator, running on virtually any device, PPSSPP supports texture packs, various APIs, and the best part is that you can run it even on older hardware or a phone with only 1GB of RAM. Moving on to Nintendo's handhelds, let's start with the Nintendo DS, and the chosen emulator is Desmium. 
I've also done a comprehensive analysis of Nintendo DS emulation, which will be available in the card. Considered a console with somewhat limited emulators, the DS has a vast library with almost 2,500 games. The best way to explore this library full of extremely fun titles is through Desmium. Although compatibility is still moderate, and the emulator is not as advanced as Citra, for example, it's the best option available at the moment. As for the successor to the Nintendo DS, the 3DS, the best emulator and the favorite of many is Citra, which also has versions for Android and other devices. Citra went from being an almost abandoned emulator to receiving updates in 2023, including the implementation of the Vulkan API, currently considered the best API for emulation. Compatibility with the 1621 3DS games is quite solid. Now you can install texture packs to give new looks to your games, play online on the emulator's private local network, and enjoy many other amazing features. The last handheld we'll cover is the PS Vita with Vita 3K. This is an emulator I've been following for some time, and suddenly it appeared with significant updates, support for the Vulkan API, and an Android version. Unfortunately, the PS Vita is one of the forgotten consoles by Sony, with a rather limited library in the West. The emulator is still not able to run Sony's exclusive games, but with each new update, it receives small improvements. Returning to this emulator, I was surprised to see how its compatibility list has grown. Initially, it practically only ran visual novels and 2D games, and today it runs a wide variety of games, even in 3D, at their actual speed and increased internal resolution. Moving on to the 7th generation, let's start with Xenia Canary, the Xbox 360 emulator. Excluding classic Xbox emulators, which are practically abandoned, Xenia is the emulator that receives the least innovation from this list. The last major feature the emulator received was upscaling tools, such as AMD FSR and an FXA improvement, in January 2022. The emulator still has many audio and graphical issues and even suffers from the gamer's enemy, the save problem. But despite being in an experimental state, it's still possible to play many things, like the first Red Dead Redemption, with incredible quality and frame rates. Additionally, the emulator is straightforward to set up and run your first games. As for the problematic PlayStation 3, it has a very good emulator, but one that has seen little improvement in the past year, RPCS 3. This is another emulator that, in the early stages of development, had an incredible rise, bringing many features that are now found in virtually all projects, such as the implementation of AMD FSR. RPCS 3 was also one of the first modern emulators to implement the Vulkan API, which has excellent performance gains compared to its competitors. However, in the last year, the development team has been focusing on preservation. They spent almost a year working on getting the emulator to boot the original console's dashboard, and game performance and other optimizations were put on hold. The last major update was when RPCS 3 started to boot and run if you have a very good processor, the Gran Turismo Racing Game Series. This was in version 0.28, currently, we're at 0.30, and the high CPU requirements have not been addressed. Starting the 8th generation of consoles, we encounter the Wii U, represented by CMU. This project seems to have been forgotten for some time. Although there are some test versions, like version 2.0, which aims to fix minor issues, the emulator, now an open source program, seems not to have shown any major news for some time. In its prime, CMU was considered one of the best emulators, receiving significant monthly updates full of new features and performance improvements. However, currently it is in maintenance mode, with no major updates in sight. The community eagerly awaits a version of CMU for Android, providing the opportunity to enjoy Zelda Breath of the Wild with acceptable quality on mobile devices. On the hybrid Nintendo Switch console, two significant projects stand out, Yuzu and Ryujinx. Each has a distinct focus, Yuzu emphasizes performance while maintaining good accuracy. Usually, new games require some updates before working correctly on Yuzu. Titles like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom show notably better performance on Yuzu. This emulator is especially recommended for those with more modest PCs or AMD GPUs, which demonstrates superior performance compared to Ryujinx. On the other hand, Ryujinx focuses on accuracy. Although some point to its inferior performance compared to Yuzu, attributing it to programming in C-sharp, its accuracy is remarkable. Most games are entirely playable on Ryujinx from the day of release. Due to its pursuit of accuracy, its system requirements are higher, 
requiring a more recent CPU to achieve excellent performance in most games. Both projects are constantly evolving, receiving regular updates and introducing new features. Finally, we reach the experimental projects for the PlayStation 4. These are often used as clickbait in the emulation scene. Sometimes, they appear with titles like Amazing, we managed to run Bloodborne. But when clicking on the video or reading the article, you only encounter the game's poorly rendered title screen, and yet the emulator takes almost half an hour to get there. In the current state, the best project is FPPS 4, which requires extremely powerful hardware to reach 40 FPS in Sonic Mania. Installation is difficult, getting games to run on the project is extremely laborious, and the result is unsatisfactory, even in 2D games. And that's it for the video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time,